50 watts of power at about 50 bucks. Not a bad deal. Stay tuned, we're gonna take a look at the ZNA 50 watt clone on the Vaporcron. Hey everybody and welcome back to this edition of the Vapor Chronicles. It's Sunday morning. I feel well rested even though I'm just having my morning cup of coffee. And we're going to take a look at this beautiful ZNA 50 watt clone sent to me for review by GearBest.com. Before I move forward into the review, let me just share with you a little something. You have a few options to purchase devices uh, when you're in the market for something, okay? Each one of them has their strengths and their weaknesses. For instance, I love shopping at local brick and mortar. Local brick and mortar stores are the foundation of most of us who vape, where we purchased our first product from, where we had our first exposure to. Um, electronic cigarettes or personal vaporizers or whatever you choose to call them. So I love shopping at local brick and mortar stores. I mean, I picked up an SX Mini at a local brick and mortar. Uh, I purchased my IPV Mini at a local brick and mortar. So I try to shop there also. At the same time, you have your US-based distributors or online stores and you can order from them and usually you pay you get a little cheaper than shopping at brick and mortar, but you don't get the personalized service. And then you have buying overseas in Singapore or China where you're going to get the best price. Gearbest.com is one of those overseas uh, stores, online stores. And if you want to save money, you better have some patience because between customs and processing and delivery, you're looking at about one to two to even three weeks, depending on where in the world you live. So just be aware of that. You're gonna probably get the best price, but you need to make sure that you have patience for your delivery to come. Uh, I've ordered four separate times from GearBest and I've always received my order. It was always as described and it was always the best price, but you have to wait for the delivery. It's the same thing with Fast Tech. It's the same thing with uh, most of them, all right? So anyway, let me just uh, also, because I get sidetracked so easily, you guys know that by now, that's part of the way I work, but I have a whole bunch of stuff to go over this week. It's Sunday, so I'm planning my week ahead. Um, last night, I went to a candlelight dinner theater with some friends and my wife, I think seven of us that were there, uh, five of us vaped. So during the intermission and before the show started, we were outside vaping. And what a weird situation. I haven't been in it before as I've been vaping. Uh, you have a crowd of 40-year-old and up people outside, probably 15 of them, and they're all smoking. And you have a crowd of us five, and we're all vaping in a separate area. And it was awkward. It was just, you know, not negative at all. It was just so weird that you know, how things have changed so much, you know, that all of us would be vaping. Uh, and then this probably 65 to 70 year old woman came out and she walked up to the smokers because they were her family or friends. And she takes out this, you know, ego type device and starts saying how, what a good change it was, you know. And I always try to, maybe it's just my insecurity, but I try to shy away from like walking up to smokers as they're just trying to get a puff in during a show. Uh, I don't want to make them feel like I'm snobbing my nose at them, even though I would love to say, listen, this is the shit. It's going to change your life and you're going to love it more than you ever love smoking. Uh, but I didn't. And thank God she, you know, it's usually easier with friends and family who I try to reach out to in a loving and caring way. But anyway, that was a really interesting uh, thing to do. But let's get on to the ZNA 50. This has been out for a little bit of time. For those of you that don't know, the original ZNA 30 was made with the Evolve DNA chip, and it was called the Zen ZNA50. And you can go to uh, houseofhybrids.com, and they actually have, which is really cool, uh, it says the Attack of the Clones, the section on the webpage, or here comes the clones. They accept you to mail them your clone, and what they'll do is they will take the 
whatever chip is in here, you know, this is just a, a clone of a chip, and they'll replace it with the actual authentic uh, evolved DNA 30 chip, or, and they will also rewire any wiring that's subpar in their minds. They'll replace different components to bring it up to specification, and the price is much cheaper than buying a real version. So if that's interest you, if you're not into clones, or if you have a clone and you wanna make it even better, uh, they'll support that and they'll redo it for you. So let me just share that. So I've been vaping on this for a few days now, and there's a lot I really like, and there's some things I really don't like. Before I get into all that and take it for a vape, let's zoom in, let's take a look at the build, let's take a look at what makes up the chip, and then we'll come back out, we'll take it for a vape, and I'll give you my final analysis. All right, guys, so let's zoom in. All right, so here we are. Let's uh, open up the box. Here we have a user manual for the 30 watt and the 50 watt device. Two extra little screws and a blue screwdriver again. Two extra little screws and a blue screwdriver again. Okay, now the way that the device comes shipped, you have your 18500 tube connected to the device, and then you have your 18650 tube separate. And we'll go into how to swap them out and what the differences are. And that's it. Here's some specs. Okay, so the outside of the device, it's made out of a stainless steel. It does have an adjustable uh, 510 center pin. It's not spring loaded, it's adjustable. Very easy to adjust, you just put your screwdriver in there and then turn it clockwise or counterclockwise depending on the uh, atomizer you are using with it. It uses a single 18500 as I said before or an 18650. To change your battery, all you would do is you would just take the battery compartment uh, cover and spin it counterclockwise and take your battery and make sure that you have the positive side facing up slide it into the tube tighten this back down and you can see it automatically turns on once the battery makes contact obviously it has a check atomizer if you don't have an atomizer on there to adjust your wattage you can go down this way and it'll scroll and it's in 0.1 increments And there's seven watts. And you notice I just fast forwarded through that. It's not that fast. I don't want to bore you to tears. And then you can go back up. So it's seven watts. All the way up to 50 watts. This is an OLED screen and it shows your battery status. It also shows the watts, the volts, and the ohm reading of the atomizer that you currently have on there. Now say for instance you'd like to put it at 40 watts because you have a Delta II tank on here. So you just put it at 40, hold the up and down button on here, and that locks your wattage set setting in. So if you try to adjust it, it's not gonna let you. To unlock, you hold both again, and now it's unlocked so you can adjust freely. This is nice so you don't have an atomizer on here and then have it in your pocket hit this button by mistake and all of a sudden you know you're, you have it set at 50 watts when your device or your tank should only support um, you know 40 or it'll dry hit and you're burning the hell out of it. If you see here uh, the screen looks like it's fluttering a little bit perhaps um, that's not in real time that's just my refresh rate trying to keep up and uh, and that's what's happening. 15 seconds the screen gets dim and after one minute the screen shuts off. So let's show you this. To change out this tube, what you wanna do, I take off the bottom here, the little battery door. And then you wanna take your battery out. This is an 18500 battery, 15 amp. So there's your inside of the tube. So let's turn this. I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise. And you'll see this tube comes off. Then you wanna grab your 
extension tube. There it is. Slide it in, turn it clockwise till it's tight. And then put your 18650 battery in. Tighten this. And then the device is on. Now, you'll notice that as soon as I put the extension on, it goes below the device uh, mechanical area here where all the electrical uh, chip components are. Personally, I don't like it. I think it's a lot of wasted space up here, okay? Um, if you take a look at another device that uses an 18650 battery, this is the SX Mini, and you can see that they were able to fit 18650 battery, same you know base, even thicker here, firing pin, and it ends right where this ends. So I just think it was a, you know, this device has been out for a while, um, but I would like if they had a revision that had either A, extend this to 18650 length, or B, shorten this and make this go up higher so that it'll fit an 18650. Uh, the 18500 is not my battery of choice for this device, but I like it for the uh, stealthy size with the 18500, so it's a trade-off, all right? So there you have it. Um, safety. This device has reverse polarity protection, so if you put your battery in backwards, it will protect you. It has a 15 second auto power down or uh, screen dimming, and then after a minute, it auto powers down. It does have a check atomizer, short circuit protection, and low voltage protection. It uses digital synchronous rectifier DC to DC converter, and you know, I don't know who makes this chip. I don't even know who makes this device. I tried to find out. There's no information on that. But from what I can tell from using it, firing it, it's exactly what it should be. And, um, you know, it works well. So it's a quality piece of hardware. Standing it up. Even with the extension on, it still stands up on its own, which is nice. It still feels good in the hand, which is nice. It's just a little bit wonky because of this extension. It's not bad, it, you know, my pinky sort of rests on there and gives me a little bit of contour. Uh, when you fire this device, it doesn't fire up here. Uh, you'll notice there's a little pin in here and it's on a, a pivot. So when you hit this, it doesn't fire. You have to hit from the middle or low. I don't mind that, that's not really a problem. In the future, it would be nice if the whole thing went in. So if you wanted to fire from the top, you could, but I don't really have a complaint about that personally. Nice and clicky. You know, it's not going to rattle on you. And everything looks good. Now, there is a delay of about two to three seconds when it goes fully asleep. Now, when it's on like this, no delay at all. It'll fire. When it goes into sleep mode, there is a delay. Now, when it goes into screen dimming mode, let's find out if there's a, a delay there. Let's put a tank on here. Okay, so it's it's dimmed right now. Let's fire. Fires right away. So there's no delay at all. If it was to fully shut down after a minute, there would be a delay of about two to three seconds before it turns back on again. Just a heads up. It can be an annoyance at times, but you know it's not that big of a problem for most people. Okay, so we're gonna do a tank comparison. Here is the Kanger Sub Tank Mini. Fire Atlantis with extender. Joytech Delta Two. E-Leaf Limo Drop. 
there's a slight bit of overhang here, 23 millimeter diameter. So there's a tiny, tiny bit, hardly at all noticeable, but it's definitely there slightly. This would look very good on the black version of this. And the billow. You'll see a little uh, gap there. That's just because I didn't adjust the the 510 pin. All right, so let's do a size comparison with a few devices real quick. So here we have the ZNA50 clone with the 18500. Um, here we have the ZNA50 clone with the 18500 SX Mini. the IPv2S and the IPv Mini. So you can get a general idea of size differences between them. So you can get a picture of uh, really how small the device is, especially when you compare it to the IPv Mini. Now granted, I don't want to be unfair. The IPv Mini has an 18650 on here. If I was to put the extender tube, you would have an extension going out this much further down at the bottom. All right, since my heater just turned back on, let's pause the video, we'll zoom back out, and we'll take it for a V. All right, so we took a look. You guys have seen everything, and this device, well, I'm torn. I'm really torn. Um, it is the most beautiful looking device that I own, personally. And remember, this is all beauty is so in the eyes of the beholder. You know, uh, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish that this device right here had an 18650 battery in it in this style. I just don't like to have to put that extender on because it changes the look of the device. That's one big issue with me because truthfully an 18500 battery just doesn't perform and doesn't have the battery life that's acceptable to me to take out and use on a regular basis. It's still good with the extender, but it takes a little bit of the sleek profile, you know, that stealthy little in your hand kind of vape. Uh, this the tank that I have on here right now is the Ego One tank from Joytech uh, that goes with the Ego One batteries, as you guys know. Uh, it is a I think an 18 and a half millimeter diameter, but it actually sits on here pretty nice. There's a little gap, but it still looks good, and it's short um, on here, so it, it actually vapes really well, and it's small, and it kind of goes with the color uh, and form factor of this device. We've already looked at all the specifications, what it can fire, what it can't fire. Let's talk about the positives. Now, this click button, I like, okay? Once the device is awake, I actually really like vaping on it. It hits right away. There might be like a 0.2 second delay when the screen's lit up, and, uh, and it fires really well. Okay, having 50 watts is really nice to be able to have that flexibility depending on my preference of vaping for that minute of that day. It's not the current gen most advanced chip on the market, but it does an adequate job. There's no glaring issues that I see. It looks great. It, it's built flawlessly. I mean, it really looks like an expensive quality piece of vaping hardware. I love how easy it is to change the battery. You can just grab the side of it and just and then swap your battery really quick. This is a more budgeted price uh, for what you get, and you get a whole lot for your money. That was definitely true three or four months ago, but then again, three or four months ago, this was a lot more expensive than it is now. But there's a lot more competition in that $55 price range right now. And you know, one of the biggest competitors that you see is the new iStick 50 watt. So, you know, 
iStick 50 watt has a lot more battery. It has a lot more power um, because of the battery capacity. You can vape it with low, lower ohm resistance for longer periods of time. And, uh, you know, do I think the iStick 50 watts is good looking as this? No. Do I think the iStick 50 watt is a better value? Yes. But it depends on what you're looking for. You know, everybody, you know, I have an iStick 50 watt. Would I have purchased this? Yes. Because I like to have a little bit of everything. And I never had one of these devices. You know, I was intrigued by it. And it has delivered exactly what I had anticipated from reading the specifications. So some things I don't like. And let's get into that. Number one, I wish this button fired at the top. It has a little hinge, so it fires here, it fires here, doesn't fire here or here. I wish it fired all the way across the unit, okay? Battery life with the 18500 is short, in my opinion. Uh, not in my opinion, it is short, period. And the unit looks wonky with the 18650 extension. My, my question always is, and I, I did this in the up close, but how can this device and this device be the same height? This is an 18650. This is an 18500. That is whoever engineered it used wasted space in the height. This could be remedied whether it will be in a new revision or a new release. I'm sure it will be, but that is an issue for me. Once this thing goes to sleep automatically after a minute of sitting, there is a serious long delay. It takes about two seconds, two to three seconds to wake back up again and start firing. That could be an issue for some people and it's an issue for me. So. Personal opinion, you know, some people can say, oh, you just hit it with your hand, let it wake up, and then fire away, and it's fine. So it's up to you. The adjustable 510 should have been, should be, I expect to be, spring-loaded from the factory on all devices this, port, this point forward. If it's just an adjustable 510, you know, it's too much of a, a hassle trying to, if I take this off, put another one on, it says atomizer, you know, uh, It'll come up with the atomizer error, and uh, you have to take a screwdriver, and you have to adjust. That's a pain in the butt, and I'm not a huge fan of that. Also, I don't know who makes this. I don't know who the manufacturer of the chip is. I don't know who the man manufacturer of the hardware is. There's no branding, labeling, or anything in the packaging uh, except for on the box that is the name of the original knocked-off company. Uh, I don't know who makes it. So whether it's an issue or not, I don't know, but I don't know anything about them. So I would like to know that a little bit more. Uh, about who makes it. It doesn't have a lefty righty mode of flipping the screen. In the iStick 50 watt, you know, you can uh, push both of these buttons when it's off and it flips it. In the SX Mini, you can automatically just flip it over and it has gravity sensing or whatever and the screen auto rotates. This does not have either, I don't think, because I've tried to hit everything and uh, I haven't figured it out. So it would be nice if that was another feature. The price is around $53.19 at GearBest.com, so if you're interested, if you're in the market for a 50 watt device, you like sleek looks and you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of an extension for battery life or a little shorter for you know using a, a better, more sleek look, it fires all different types of resistance fine. I haven't had any problems with overheating. It, it's been a strong performer and it feels really, really good in my hand and it shows well. So this is a nice piece, I'm gonna use it. You know, make make a, an informed decision based upon my look here, other reviews, look at what your preferences are when you vape, and make an informed, intelligent decision. So that's it, that's the ZNA50 clone. Uh, thanks for watching the Vapor Chronicles. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe today. If you subscribe to my channel, you have the chance of watching my latest vlog and finding out the contest and how you can enter. Also, real quick, Anyone in the world can participate in my contest and I will pay for shipping. I will send it to you. For all of you that um, were upset by my decision to not do that, I apologize. I never intended to make anyone feel like they weren't important. I just didn't want to have the burden of trying to send five devices to who knows where on, on the planet and how much it was going to cost. I get it. I'm going to cover the cost and I really appreciate you guys. So thank you. You can also visit me online at www.thevaporchronicles.com. You're going to be flooded today, uh, maybe today and tomorrow, with some new content. Uh, I'm going to be dropping the ZNA, which I'm recording right now. And I'm also going to do my full iStick 50-watt review and the SX Mini review. That's the next three things up. So stay tuned to the channel. Those are going to drop soon. Then we have the Segeli uh, Mini 
we have the we have a whole bunch of stuff coming this week. So it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Content, quality products, quality reviews. Thanks for watching. I will see you very, very soon on the Vapor Chronicles.